I now call uh, Deputy Clare Daly. Ten minutes. Yeah, thanks, Ken Corla. I was going to start by welcoming the report, which is a substantial body of work which pinpoints the difficulties and uh, identifies important measures for the future. But I have to say, having listened to the interpretation put on this report by the Minister earlier, that I can come to no other conclusion but to say that the panel was established in order to minimise the state's responsibility in this regard. The comments you've made, Minister, are an absolute insult to the people who took time off work and are up in that gallery. And I don't make these points lightly. I make them on the basis that Brendan Toohey, the chair of the panel, attended an Oireachtas Environment Committee and said that nobody mentioned the state's role in this. That is absolutely not true. I mentioned it, many of those people mentioned it, and I know other people did. That two of the people on that panel were former members of the Building Regulations Advisory Board and the National Standards Authority of Ireland and attended all of the meetings. And that Arthur Cox, the government's own legal advisers, legally advised the panel in drafting and crafting this report. And nobody, Minister, nobody is saying, as you did in your introduction, that we want all of the blame for all of the failures to rest with the state. Nobody has said that. Everybody accepts that the main stakeholders have a role in this, the quarry owners, the insurance companies, the banks, and so on. But the idea that you have consistently tried to put forward that the state is not responsible is factually incorrect and will not be tolerated by citizens in this country. The scenario that we have used to explain a similarity is like the flood victims, like the victims of clerical abuse. It wasn't the state that carried out the actions that gave rise to those victims, but the state has a central role in bringing out a remedy that can sort it out. And unless the money and the fund is put up front and the state then chases the stakeholders, those people will be left in uh, limbo. And, you know, it's not good enough to say, as you did, that the state couldn't have known. And I'm aware that the panel have said this as well. But do you know what? The panel are actually wrong. Because there were bodies employed by this state who were charged with regulating standards. And the BRAB and the NSAI brag in their literature that their responsibility and role was to uh, have a responsibility for a continuous honing of te technical expertise to ensure that we are abreast of all international developments. Well, they didn't keep abreast of developments in the area of technical expertise because the expertise was there. For 50 years, there was knowledge in existence, not every engineer had it, but quite widespread, that elevated levels of sulphur in sedimentary rocks containing pyrite increased the chances of a sulphate attack on concrete and steel and swelling causing gypsum, causing heave. The first published article on this was in Britain in the late 70s, 35 years ago. And there were other reports in the 80s, in the 90s as well. There was the Canadian experience, which you referred to. And there was geological knowledge of the rock formation around the, uh, the Tubercoline formation on which many of the quarries arrived. So they should have known. When they went looking in 05, despite that knowledge being there, it took them two years to get an explanation for the cracking. Now, it's been suggested by somebody if they Googled it on a search engine, they would have got it in a half an hour. But to be honest, there was no explanation for why it should have taken two years. The panel compliments Fingal County Council. And let's be clear, Fingal is the area where most of the victims live and are living with the consequences. That, so that's why they are particularly important in this role. When the first case was confirmed in June 07 to Fingal County Council by home bond, they correctly notified Bay Lane Quarry, where they knew where the infill came from, very good, and they wrote to all of the developers who'd given commencement notices uh, from that month that they were starting development in Fingal, alerting them to the possible danger of uh, uh, pyrite in the materials. Very good, yeah, but actually not good enough. Why didn't they write to the other three quarries in Fingal who also have pyrite in them? Uh, Roadstone in Hunstown, Murphy's Quarry, coincidentally the same, Seamus Murphy, a uh, friend of, of uh, primary care centres and so on. Why weren't those quarries also put on the alert? Why didn't Fingal County Council contact the developers and the builders of the projects that were already underway, that had already commenced? Many of them, I have to be honest about it, probably owned by the people in those galleries. The buildings that had the slab floor laid 
but no other construction on it. It would have cost about 5,000 to remove the infill at that stage, rebuild the property. Instead, these are being left with a bill of about 50,000 and a house that they cannot use. So in actual fact, it wasn't good enough. And yes, they did go to the aggregates panel and devise a new standard, and that's good. But what does that tell you? Well, it tells you that the existing standard was not adequate. So they did change the standard in 07. I would say as well, though, it took them six months to do so. How many other thousands of dwellings came on the scene within those uh, six months? And you'd have to say, you couldn't come to any other conclusion that the inadequate standard that emerged in 07, and it is inadequate because Premier, the second biggest insurer in the state, will not insure properties that meet the Irish standard because it's not good enough. So why, when our standards are similar to Britain in everything, they're not similar in this one, and they don't, they don't reach the British standard? Well, I think it's because the aggregates panel, five of the seven members are from the industry. Kilsaran, Roundstone, Irish Cement, the Irish Concrete Federation. They have a vested interest, actually, in ensuring that the standards are kept low, that there isn't testing because it's more onerous on them. And I would point out that the panel are incorrect. They stated repeatedly that there are five quarries. When they were told the names of six quarries, and everybody knows there are six quarries with pirate, and in actual fact, I'm reliably informed that there are seven. So the state is responsible for this lack of oversight and standard. But crucially, it's also responsible because of allowing the fraud, and I say the fraud, of home bond, allowing them to pose themselves as a structural guarantee when everybody knows it wasn't worth the paper it was written on. Society knew in 2000 when the Law Society gave a warning about that. They have totally and utterly failed people and the residents and I reject the idea, any idea of home bond playing a leading role in the resolution of this process. They do have the lists, we know that, take them off them and use it. They do have money, 25 million in the bank, I believe, of which not much will be drawn on other than pyrite cases. Take it off them. Use it to start the fund going to begin the remedial works. They do not have an expertise in this, and there should be no uh, question of them having a role in the oversight of the remedial works. That has to be done on an independent basis. But crucially, and I think the key point that has been touched on by other deputies is that it is completely inadequate to address this on an individual case-by-case -case basis as the panel are suggesting there must be a systematic and state-led approach to renovation there is no other way that this will happen now the Don't points have been made the residents completely refute uh, the figures regarding uh, the numbers of houses affected and indeed the traffic light uh, system that operates as well it isn't the case that there's only 850 critically damaged houses with pirate. It's simply not true. In one example of one case, in my own area, they were told that there were 15 houses notified to, to uh, home bond. Can't get verification of that when the residents knew of about 50 in a development of over 600 houses. The idea that there's an amber category. If your house is in amber, if it has pyrite, but it's not displaying the signs, it's not going to disappear. It can only go in one direction. It can only get worse. So they have a valueless, uh, not fit for purpose dwelling noose around their neck that they can do nothing about. There can be no phasing here. The only way to deal with this is by a state-led, systematic, uh, a state by state basis. Uh, and that can only happen, in my opinion, if the minister takes a lead and sets up a fund. It has to start with comprehensive testing, not by people extending their mortgages to get a loan from the bank to pay for it. Uh, the banks should be copping up themselves. They should be funding the whole uh, remediation and testing thing, but that's another, but they should certainly, no cost to the residents, systematic testing and systematic uh, uh, renovation in that regard. And the last point I'll make is that, you know, it is our responsibility. And if the minister has made a couple of references to the poor residents and the heartache and all of that, but to be honest, it does ring very hollow unless something is delivered on this very quick. And you did say in the summer when you launched this report that the lads had three months to come up with a solution or you were imposing it. Now that was four months ago. And now you're saying, oh, well, another 10 days and we'll see. These people cannot afford the can to be kicked down the road. We're told there's two billion in Na from NAMA being spent on capital projects. There is up to potentially a billion in um, uh, 
unspent development levies held by local authorities. Obviously, you were able to write off bad debts of, of uh, councils, transfer them to government. You can come up with the money to start this fund. These people cannot be left waiting, and they're not going to go away. This issue is too serious. The state is ultimately responsible and will be judged accordingly whether they come up with a solution to this or not.